Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, cut straight to the point in this video. We're gonna do the heads, we're gonna do the push rods, and the rocker arms. Gonna bang that all out today, get this thing looking like an engine again, and yeah, so finally going back together. It's Easter weekend, finally have three days off of work. Woo! Ugh, haven't had a day off in a while. So yeah, just cover something real quick. Uh, before we start, since this engine's been sitting here for a little bit, even though I threw a bag over it, just going to take some denatured alcohol and just wipe down all these surfaces one more time. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom side of the head. So I don't know if there's any milling materials, but yeah, just clean up the bottom side. So that we have a nice clean gasket going on. And I will do all the torque specs and go over all that stuff and how you're supposed to do it. So... I'm gonna clean that up first, and then we'll just dive right in. And can't wait, this thing's going back together. Uh, so being that this is my only day off, I'm trying to do a whole lot today. I wanna to get this engine either entirely together or partially back together. I have a brake master cylinder finally, so I'm gonna swap that out. I'm gonna make a video on that that's gonna come out later. And I have my new clutch system, which I'm gonna set up, but when until the engine's in and the transmission's in and I can fully adjust that, that's when that video will come out. Stay tuned for those in the near future. And uh, let me clean up these heads in this block and we'll start digging into it. All right guys, just about ready to put one of the heads on. So spray it with a little denatured alcohol. You can use brake clean, wherever you want. Whatever makes it clean and gets all the manufacturing oils off and all that stuff. And make sure you use a lint-free rag because uh, you will get little strands of gobbledygook that'll get caught up in these little holes. No big deal, come over here. And I sprayed some brake clean and denatured alcohol on the block so the head could go on nice and clean. There's nothing hanging out here that could screw us up. And one other thing you gotta do, I did this a while ago, I didn't record it and I just thought of it, but where your head bolts go, clean that out. Uh, what I did was I used, I still have it right here, use one of the old head bolts and just sprayed some brake clean down there, ran it down, pulled it back out, ran it down and in a couple times and then sprayed it out with brake clean just to get anything out of there that we don't need. And also one other thing you want to do is make sure you have your dowels and make sure they're seated. Just take a little rubber mallet, do a couple little boop boop and boop boop, make sure you got them and... Yeah, we're ready to uh, put a gasket on and get a head on. All right, guys, got the head gasket on. Going to be putting the head on in a second. And just a heads up, when you get the package of head gaskets from Texas Speed or GM or whoever, it says quality one on the package, but there's two in there. So keep that in mind. You're not doubling up the head gasket or any of that stuff. So I got an extra set from uh, Texas Speed. Could come in handy one day if the Jeep project gets done. So let's get this head on and see how pretty it looks. So shiny, so new. All right, so this is gonna go just like this. Try to hit that dowel. Sorry you're getting my ass in this picture, but there we go, we're on. All right, we got one cylinder head on. Woo, we're going places. We are going places, so real nice. Now I'll explain this part in a second, but where the bolt goes, you're gonna have a washer. You gotta clean that little spot off, just like here, 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 and also down on these spots. Not using these, obviously, because they are for a different engine. I guess they made this for multiple different engines. So if you have a Gen 3, Gen 4, you could just put it on. So we're gonna have these little tabs overhanging. No big deal. Let me, uh, clean up that little spot. It says you can use brake clean, but I got brake clean and denatured alcohol, but just wipe down, like I said, where the washers go, and I'll go over the torque sequence, and also the little lube that they give you, the assembly lube. I guess it's like an oil, so when you torque it down, it's nice and loose. So we're gonna start on this head, and I'll do the other head afterwards while I have it on the engine stand, nice and flat. As you can tell, it's straight up and down. So yeah, well, I'm ready to do the other side, but we'll do one side at a time. We'll get this done. All right, guys, I cleaned off where the little bolts go. These are a pain in the ass. Just got to get a 
a long finger in there like you're going in your mom and cleaned up here and cleaned up in these little guys up top the arp bolts they come with washers so it says to wipe them all down like you don't spray them or anything it just says wipe them down with a clean rag but maybe you'll see on this one but you'll see like a little checkered bottom and a flat top this checkered bottom is going to go down on the head now it doesn't say anything about these little guys these little guys don't have any of that we're going to play that by ear and also it doesn't say anything about cleaning the bolts but i'm just going to take a paper towel or actually not paper towel but uh lint-free rag and i'm just going to wipe them down because they got oils on them so i'm going to go with that method and then i will show you the rest of the way but anyway these little guys it says to place them where they're going to go obviously with that little checkered side down and the smooth side up now it's going to be kind of sketchy getting it in there but we'll make do we'll get it in there and then i will show you how to lube up the head bolts and then we can start torquing and get this bad boy nailed down all right guys getting ready to throw some bolts in uh it comes with this assembly lubrication assembly lubrication uh, it says to put it on the bottom of the bolt head and down the threads. So I don't know how liberal you could get with this because you got 10 of them to do. So I would just do a nice little coating just on the threads, the bottom of the head, and drop it in. And it says to snug it down hand tight. The main bolts, the big guys on the bottom and inside, those are 13 millimeters in this kit. And the top ones up here. They're gonna be a 10 millimeter. They get torqued last, but still start them, get them in hand tight, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we got bolt number one. We're just gonna squeeze a little bit of this out and see what happens. And okay, we got a little bit of that. So, so it's not that crazy. So we got a little bit there. We'll spread that on the threads. Okay, so I got a little bit on the threads. Get it in there, get it all nice and lubed up. And then it says to also do underneath here. So we got enough in there, got a good amount in there. Okay, I guess that's it. So drop this in, we'll start right here since it's right here, nice and easy. And we'll thread that down. All right, so I'm gonna lube up the rest of these, get them started, get them down hand tight. Uh, this one's a little tight, so I'm gonna try and just be careful with it with a wrench. But other than that, I'm gonna get these started and then we'll pick up on the torquing sequence. All right guys, got all these uh, ARP bolts all snugged up. Uh, it says to hand tighten them, but I had to put a wrench on it to get it going a little bit. So I got it pressed down. Got all our washers going the right way. The flat spot is up. The little crisscross groove part is facing down. And now we're going for the torque sequence. So your first pass through on these is going to be 25 foot pounds. Now these get torqued 25 foot pounds, but they come at the end. So you're going to just focus on these 10 right here. And just to show you the torque sequence, we'll back off the head. So number one, top dead center. Number two, straight down. Number three is up here. Number four here five up here six and then it goes seven eight nine ten so that's the torque order and then when you do the top you're going to start from the middle you're going to go from here to here to here 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 and that should do it so it's going to go 25 foot pounds and then you're going to go to 50 and then you're going to go to 80. And then after you do those 10, you're going to do the 25 foot pounds up top. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to go through it real quick and uh, see if we get the side banged out and then we'll knock out the other side and we'll have something that looks like an engine finally. All right, guys. Uh, didn't want to record for the other side, so now we're doing this side. All right, guys, starting 25 foot pounds for the first pass. All 
All right, going up to 50 pounds, yo. Same sequence, just go. And now up to 80 pounds. All right guys, got all these big bolts torqued up and ready to go. Now we just gotta torque these top guys down to 25 foot pounds. And I'll do it for the heads. Okay, just like that, we have something that looks like an engine. Woohoo! All right, guys, a couple weeks later, but we finally got push rods. So we could do the heads and the push rod and rocker arm video and get that done finally it's been about two and a half three weeks in the making but we finally got the right size push rods and we could start doing stuff so i've already done this side just to show you how i torqued them all down first of all you want it on the small side of the cam lobe so let's see if i can see it right down here so it may be difficult to see, but if you look down at that guy, that guy's on the smallest part of the lobe, where this one is the lobe itself. It's, stick, it's sticking up right now, as you can tell. So you want it on the smallest part of the lobe, and I'll show you when I go to do this side, because you can kind of cheat on these and like make sure you're good. So anyway, my torquing process is Get this on the small side of the lobe, and I did that on this one. Wait, no. And I started on this one. That is the exhaust on the passenger side. And I was able to see down, and you can see it right now. It's actually on the short side now, on the cam. So when I get to that point, I would start the torque wrench here at the 12 o'clock position, and I would turn it. Now, my target was between like here and like here which is like 45, 25. So I was getting between here and like a little more. So that's perfect. So these things should be good to go, but I will demonstrate it on the other side of the engine. Like I said, I just wanted to do a trial run on this side. This side's done. And uh, once I button up the driver's side of the vehicle, then I can slap valve covers on and this will be closed up and we'll be ready to go back in finally. Let me get the other side all set up and I'll explain what I'm doing there. Alright guys, to start you want to put some assembly lube on all the tips of these. So to put this on, this particular brand is very thick and goopy. And drop it right in and just make sure you're seated. You can push down on this and it springs back and forth. You know you're in the lifter, so that's good. So I'm going to finish these two, and then I'm gonna put some assembly lube on top of all these springs. Just so that the rocker arm has something to kind of break it in. So let me continue with this. I'll get these gooped up, and then I'll show you what to do next. All right guys, looking through where the valley cover is into the engine, I can see that this part of the cam and this part of the cam are at the lowest point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start two of these and just get them snug just so that this little rocker tray sits straight. So I'm gonna boot this in and also put some assembly lube in there. So it hits the top of the push rod, so that one's good. Snug you down a little bit so there's just no play. Right, that one's good. A little wiggle. And I got assembly lube in this one. I'm gonna put it right on the end, drop it in. Get it started. Okay, so now we are ready to start getting this one prepped to get to work down. So if you look inside, it's in this back corner here, as you can see by my finger. Let's see if we can get in there a little closer. Right there. You know you're on the small side of the lobe. You can see the 
the lifter right there. So we know we're in a good spot to get this torque down. So let me just show you what you don't want. So I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. So right before you start torquing it, you do not want this being able to lift up and down. You want side to side a little bit, but not up and down. That's valve lash, we don't want that. So you're just gonna snug this down till you feel a little resistance, like I barely have any right there. So right now, this lifter does not go up and down, but it moves side to side. So that's like perfect right there. So I'm gonna show you how I torque these down to 25 foot pounds and the amount of preload we want on our lifter. So when we get the torque wrench, I'll get it on here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're just about ready to go. So like I said, we got our side to side, but no up and down. So that's perfect. The push rod is seated in the rocker arm good. I could push down on this. I could feel the spring inside the lifter. So we know we're seated inside the lifter right. And our torque wrench is set to 25 foot pounds. So what you're gonna do is, see if we get this to the 12 o'clock position and get it inside. There we go. So like I said, we want this to turn from here, go around to about th eh, this position to like over here. So we should fall somewhere in there. So here we go, 25 foot pounds. So we're going, 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 hitting resistance. So right there is probably about our 25,000. So we should be able to get closer to 30. So let's go a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. And perfect. So we're right in our zone that we want. 25 thousandths is about here. 45 thousandths is about right here. And maybe a little less than that. But so we're right in the 30s somewhere here. So we are perfect. Now being that this lobe is on the lowest point, we should be able to get the same result here. I'll slide the engine over so we get a good view and we should get similar, almost exact results. All right, so I backed this one out a little bit and I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit, push down, make sure that the, the lifter's pushed all the way down into the cam because that'll throw you off. So, got a little side to side there. No preload on the lifter. We're, we got side to side movement and I just snug it down the slightest bit not so that there's pressure put on the lifter, but just to snug this up a little bit. So we're in perfect position there. So that's perfect, right in. So we want the same result. We want it to come down to somewhere in this range and that should do it. So we're going down, 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 down. Hitting resistance there. Hitting resistance there. Perfect. So we're about the same position as the last one was, maybe a little bit, maybe it went like a tiny bit more, but that's still in our zone because about here is like our max. So about 50 thousandths of preload is about three quarters of a turn. 25 thousandths is somewhere like right over here, about a third of a turn. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go down the line, do the rest of them. I still gotta put the assembly lube on these guys and assembly loop here, put the rockers in, and then we're gonna go down the line and we're gonna check our results. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how to do a cylinder in quick succession. So when I crank the engine over, these two will, one will drop and come up and the other one will open real quick and come back up. And then you give it a couple more turns just to get it on the round side of the cam lobe. So I'm gonna crank the engine over and you'll see one of them drop and come up and the other one will drop very soon after that and come right back up and then we'll give it a couple more turns. All right, so we got this one going down now. It's coming back up. And then the other one's gonna start going down, which it did. So this one's starting to go down now. And then when it gets back up to the top, we'll just give it a couple more turns. So now we know we're on the round side of the lobe, or at least we should be. So if the torquing is wrong, then you know you're not on it, but 
These two should be good. Just give them a little push down just to make sure that they're seated all the way down. And we'll go through these two. All right, so we're just gonna snug them down real quick. That one's pretty good right there. We got the side to side, no up and down. And let's check this guy. That one's snug. We got side to side, no up and down. So now we'll do our same method on both of these. These should check out. 12 o'clock position right there. I'm gonna start turning. We're getting about 12 o'clock position. It's snagging up a little bit and perfect. So we're right in our range that we want. And we'll go over to this one, make sure it wasn't a fluke. So we're in the 12 o'clock position. Start around, hitting some resistance around the six o'clock position and Perfect. So these two are good to go. That is the easiest way to figure it out so you're not jumping all over the place trying to torque these down. You could kind of get one cylinder at once. So like I said, one will drop, come up, and the other one will drop and come up and just give it a couple more turns. Maybe like a half a turn, maybe a little more than a half a turn on the crank to get this in position. You'll know you're on the round side of the lobe. So I'm gonna throw these two in, get them all done, and we'll wrap up the video. <laughs> all right guys, we got all of our rocker arms in and push rods in. So we're pretty much good to go on this engine. Just gotta put it back in, bolt some things up, and you know, just start right up. You know, that's how it works. You know, you just drop it in and it's, it's good. It's good, yeah, <laughs> I wish. Let me know what method you guys use in, you know, checking for preload on these things. This is the method that I always used, and I've done it probably about five or six times, and neither none of the engines ever had an issue. There was no valve tapping. There was lifters not going bad. You know, if you whether you put a dial indicator on here and you want to make sure that you're getting the depth that you want. Let me know in the comment if I did something wrong or you think I did it right or it's a method you use. Let people know in the comments. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking and all that stuff. Uh, I think the next video coming out is probably going to be either putting the fuel injectors on the intake manifold and transferring the rail over and doing all that stuff, or the brake master cylinder and the brake lines. Spoiler alert, it's done. It worked, but there's a catch to it. So. Watch the video, I'll explain it all in there. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, you know the deal. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, out.